Hey there, good afternoon, good evening, good night all. This is friend Anya, happy holidays. I'm gonna go through a, a walkthrough of a Try Hack Me box called uh, Fosniff. Fosniff 1 CTF, which really originally was uh, uh, a Vulnhub box and is now hosted by Try Hack Me. We did this live uh, on Twitch the other night and I just thought it was fun, it was kind of a good all levels box so let's jump into it my fellow pen testers and uh cybersecurity enthusiasts we're gonna grab the ip and start our nmap scan you can see i was working on this i always like to configure with the current ip thm box add that in and we're just going to run an mmap scan for the service version and kick up that verbosity so we'll run this I've ultimately already thrown up the ports over here in my sublime document but uh, let's explain a little about um, the machine I suppose before jumping back to our mmap scan so as the explanation reads Fosniff this boot root machine is brilliant for new starters. You have an, uh, uh, you'll have to enumerate this machine, find out ports, do some online research, decode hashes, brute force, pop three login. That was my selling point originally, and much more. So it's structured step by step, but like me and my friends at Twitch, we basically did this unguided. So. I think it is a good all levels box in that sense that you can be a beginner more on the beginner side or you can just do it without the instruction okay so we see that ports 80 110 and 143 are open as well as of course port 22 and you will see this ssh rsa keys will become important but let's first um head over to web site for Fosniff that's hosted on port 80 and we have a site that's tempered out of service oh, oh. Fosniff's internal system suffered data breach that resulted in the exposure of employee usernames and passwords client information is not affected um pass our employees have been instructed to change their passwords immediately attackers were also able to hijack our official at Fosniff core Twitter account. There we go. All of our official tweets have been deleted and the attackers might release more information. So let's go. Now I had difficulty logging in 2x or Twitter or, or browsing tweets. I guess you need a login. So we're going to knitter. And here we go. Faux sniff. Indeed, their Twitter was pwned. We'll look at the tweet and replies. And we see some important information here. Is this your sysadmin? Stone at Fosniff, and then we have a hash here. And then pastebin. So let's also travel the pastebin. Of course, take, note that down. Um, stone at Fosniff. Uh, so we go to the pastebin. And here's a password dump here in a text file. So let's open up that tab. And within the text file is indeed all the employees and uh, their passwords, which we're going to have to, to crack, crack these hashes. Some other important information here that the big ninja hacker leaves. MD5, so again, we know we have to crack the hashes, is insecure, so you shouldn't have uh, trouble cracking them. I was too lazy to, though. <laughs> that is really lazy. Um, so here's the crux of it, though. They, uh, their email password stumped from their databases, and they left their POP3 server wide open. Um, and of course, <laughs> try Acme has the caveat, this is not a real password. <laughs> um, so we're gonna, you know, we want to copy and paste this I went to Crackstation ultimately, and 
we started just cracking the hashes. So I'll just give an example here with the first entry, which is Mauer at Fosniff. Let's throw his, there we go, his hash. We'll throw in another, just randomly. Um, actually, let's throw in... This is stones. So we're gonna do, I'm not a robot. <laughs> of course it asked me to verify again. And here we go. So you see, yes, MD5, that's the hacker and indicated. And the result for this hash for user malware is mail call. And uh, I took out the usernames because it was not able to get a hit for MD5 otherwise. And you see here, stones, we can't crack it. So that's pretty consistent down the board for the users. All of their passwords, all the hashes were able to be cracked, except for the one corresponding to stone. So now here's where we're going to brute force the POP3 login. Try hack me here. Um, in a hint, let's see, once you to use Metasploit. Okay. Using the usernames and passwords you captured, can you use Metasploit to brute force the POP login? So I, I did this with off screen. I don't particularly like Metasploit, so I'm going to do it the way I originally did this in the Twitch stream. But you can use Metasploit ultimately to brute force the POP3 service and gain access to some emails. Uh, do net connect. So um, we're going to, instead of Metasploit, we're going to connect to the IP address and just port 80, or sorry, port uh, 110. Okay, so let's grab one of the users. Um, we'll go with Stone. Well, we, we will not go with Stone since we don't know Stone's password or we were not able to crack that hash. So we're going to go with Mustika here. Bilbo 101. Mustika. Bilbo 101. Okay, user. And you'll see this is consistent for all users, except for one. So we can connect, but there's there's the authentication error. So let's try connecting again, port 110, and the user ultimately that was successful was Sienna. So we'll go down, we have Sienna, and then Sienna's username, uh, sorry, uh, password is Scooby-Doo 2. And we're logged in. So we're going to list out the contents. And we have two messages. So let's return message 1. This is written by AJ Stone, obviously. So, this is an email from Stone to Sienna with all the employees CC urgent security event. Dear all, a few days ago, a malicious actor was able to gain entry to her internal email systems. The attacker was able to exploit incorrectly filtered escape characters within a SQL database to access their login credentials. Both the SQL and authentication system um, used legacy methods that have not been updated in some time. So, I, temporarily this email server has been isolated with minimal functionality. They don't allow um, web access to the server. However, access 
the system via the SSH protocol is, is still enabled. And the temp password they give here that Stone gives uh, for SSH is right here. So yeah, the group is working off of a local mail server that's not accessible to the web, but they can SSH with this temp key here. Also important is you must change this password as soon as possible, and you will do so under my guidance. Somebody screws up and that leads us um, further down the line. So let's return message two. This is just more funny than anything, I guess. This is from Baxteen to Sienna. And they're basically just kind of dragging up. Uh, they're, they're being pretty mean to AJ. You should have seen the brass lay into AJ today. And uh, who knew the regional manager had been Navy? She was swimming like a sailor. They talk about being sick and somebody's sick here in this equation. But here's the more important line. Uh, so it, it's got her here. I'm going to head home early in each chicken soup because they're sick. I think I just got an email from Stone, Stone too, but it's probably just some let me explain the tone of the meeting safe uh, face saving email. So we see here Baxteen Skyler has missed uh, AJ's message that you will have to change the password under his guidance upon logging in. Don't keep using that temp password. Why? I don't know. He just didn't force uh, that the password be changed upon initial login. I don't I don't know. But anyway, we know port 22 is open, so now we can SSH. That basically narrowed down the users that we would try. Sienna, uh, you can't SSH as Sienna. But you see, Baxine's the one that failed to change their temporary password, or at least we have reason to suspect that. So let's log in as Baxteen. Let's do that again. Grab the IP. So we're in as vaccine again. Uh, the the clue in the email is correct. They failed to change their temporary password. So let's list out. Um, we go back here to the write up. We'll get a bit of information. Can't do sudo tack l. We don't have the permissions. So ultimately, we want to look into group information. ID groups and we see that Baxteen is a member of two user groups. If you go through a bit um, more here uh, digging, we'll find there's not uh, many interesting files under group Baxteen. There's almost nothing on the system. Everything is on, all of the files are owned by this users group. So Triacme also encourage us us to find um, files that are run, any interesting files that are run by that group, the user group that Baxteen belongs to. Not this group though. Okay, so we're going to do find type file group. Um, users. Okay. So we get a, a few interesting hits here, mostly. We're looking at this opt cube, cube sh. So let's just initially cap that out. And we see it's just printing a banner. 
Okay. Now, I had to continue to look at Try Hack Me, ultimately to, so uh, to solve this. Once we find this important script, you know, you can probably guess that we can throw in a malicious, um, a malicious one-liner and we ultimately throw in the payload for our rev shell and start at cat listener, but here it is. If you've not found out already, this file runs as root when a user connects to the machine using SSH. We know this as when we first connect, we can see we get a banner. Look in Etsy update mopd. If after we have put our rev shell in the cube file, we then include this file in the mod.d.d file, it will run as root and we will get a river shell as root. Okay, so that's important. Let's inspect that and then we'll edit uh, the cube file. So we go to the update um, hyphen mod.d.d directory, let's out the contents. We're going to cat out this executable here. This is our header. Oh, so this is a bash script and we see that it ultimately calls it has um motd um what is that message of the day so that's banners and announcements that you get upon login with an important information about the system server etc um so you know it usually be a splash screen and an announcement So yeah, basically we have um, the directory and the double O header files runs the shell script and this operates, um, this is triggered. This the double O header is triggered every time we have Backstein or another user, well ultimately Backstein because we'll edit the shell script. Uh, it's available on their desktop. So. When we log as, and as Backstein, after putting the Python one-liner, we'll be able to start our netcat listener, and with the mod.d file calling the bash script, it'll it'll execute upon um, Backstein logging back in <laughs> anyway. Um, let's try that one more time. So basically, as we log in through SSH, we get a banner similar to one that uh, the, the CubeSH contains. If you check the mod.d.d directory to look for executables that might run this program, you find the double header runs this shell script. And when you start the netcat listener, you'll log back in as Backstein. We'll ultimately, uh, the, the netcat listener will catch the connection and it'll run as root. So we're going to use this full script in QBSH. Back to opt Q. Okay. So we're just going to st stick our payload down here. I'm gonna grab my uh, the IP on my Cali box here, and actually, I tried this with a bash one-liner. I don't think I still have it, unfortunately. Oh yeah, I do. Tried it with this with this bash one-liner. Did not work. So just went with Triacme's suggestion ultimately and did the Python script. So we'll leave this, um, catch the connections on one, two, three, four. But ultimately, we're gonna put in my local Kali address, 10.6.3.19. And actually we're gonna encase this quotations. I think it will trigger a syntax error if you don't. 
So let's quit, right click, cat it out. There we go. Um, is that actually missing? Well, we're gonna have to edit it again. Python. Three. Okay. That looks good. Alright. So... Let's run first without the netcat listener. Connection refused. Okay, so that's good. No syntax errors at least. So we'll run... Um, that cat listener trigger the strip and there we go but right now we're back steam so let's just exit we need to execute this as root so we've edited the, the cube script what we need to do now to trigger that mot update hyphen mot dot d the, the double header script is to just exit out start up the netcat listener and one more time log in as backsteen with our temp key temp Okay, and you see here now, just think this larger. Who am I? Should be able to guess. Root. Okay, so we caught the connection and we are root. Uh, there's, there's a lot of fun stuff you can cruise, but we're just gonna go directly to the root directory, list out the contents. We have a mail uh, directory and we have flag.txt which gets us our root flag. So, nice work. The CTF was built with love in every bite. And shout out to Berserko on Twitter and the team. Oh, uh, how perfect that my machine expires right now. Or it's expiring half an hour. Anyway, this was a lot of fun. Um, you can try doing the pop 3 brute force again with Metasploit or some other methods, but I had fun just kind of um, fooling around with FTP and all of that. Uh, yeah, I thought this was a great kind of all levels box um, where you could do this as a relative beginner, I suppose, by going step by step. Or you can be a, a little bit more advanced in your journey. Uh, anyway, Fosniff1 really enjoyed this box. Guys, I hope you uh, bear with me with this walkthrough. Trying to do different things. I'm going to try to edit this uh, a bit. But anyway, that's a walkthrough. Please be easy on me. I'm new to these. Usually, I'm just live over Twitch. Anyway, guys, good afternoon, good evening, good night, happy holidays, um, I hope to be back soon.